Good evening. It's Friday, the 31st of January, Lunar New Year's Day. You're tuned in to our 6 p.m. newscast coming to you from Arirang's News Centre in Seoul. Let's start with the traffic conditions on the nation's expressways on this Lunar New Year's Day, as you might expect, with millions of people heading to and from their hometowns over this holiday period. Major roads in and out of the metropolitan Seoul area are jam-packed at this hour. The Korea Expressway Corporation says around 400,000 cars are returning to Seoul on this Friday, while nearly the same number are leaving the capital. Traffic coming back to Seoul is forecast to start getting congested from Saturday morning and will steadily pick up during the day. As of just a few minutes ago, the estimated drive time from Seoul to the southern port city of Busan is 7 hours 10 minutes. Seoul to Gwangju is 4 hours 40 minutes. And to the eastern city of Kangnung, it will take you 4 hours. We will give you an update on the conditions during our next newscast at 10 p.m. Korea time. That's in about four hours' time. Now, 2014 is the year of the horse on the Chinese zodiac, a period associated with power and a close relationship with nature. Local governments in Korea are also aiming to use it to boost Korea's horse industry with the help of a new $500 million ecotourism project. Paulie reports. Here on Korea's western coast, near the city of Hwasungshi in Gyeonggi-do province, lies fields of untapped potential for the nation's tourism and agricultural industries. The fertile ground remains undeveloped, with no large factories or even residential areas in sight. But the Gyeonggi-do provincial government has big plans for this newly reclaimed land. Officials say over 760 hectares will be dedicated to creating a major development project called Eco Farmland, which will combine livestock farming, horseback riding, and regional tourism. Some 520 million U.S. dollars in funding has already been committed to cover project expenses through 2016, with a majority of that money going towards investments in horse-related industries. Among the planned facilities include equestrian venues, horse riding academies, and an animal hospital. Other secondary businesses, such as horse race training and breeding, will also be supported. Gyeonggi-do hopes to capitalize on the rising popularity of horseback riding in Korea to attract visitors. In addition, the region will be designated a special industrial zone to promote agricultural research. By merging the livestock and tourism industries, we can create a new agro-tourism sector. We expect this field to play an important role as a new growth engine for rural areas and development of the horse industry. From leisure activities and sporting events to scientific research, the Eco Farmland Venture plans to drive job creation for the region, as well as open a new era of eco-friendly tourism. Paul Yi, Arirang News. The state Senate in the U.S. state of Virginia has passed a resolution which identifies the body of water between Korea and Japan as the Korean name East Sea, as well as Japan's name Sea of Japan. Tokyo is unhappy with the development and has made its feelings very clear on the matter. Jim Young Gil reports. A legislative panel at the Virginia House of Delegates passed the EC bill on Thursday, which requires Virginia textbooks to use the Korean name EC as well as Japan's name, Sea of Japan. The 5 to 4 vote in the Education Subcommittee kept alive the Korean American community's hope that Virginia will become the first U.S. state to introduce legislation to identify the body of water between Korea and Japan as the EC. Speaker of the House uh, spoke up the other day among all, all our members and said this was an important bill to pass. We recognize the importance of the Korean American community to Virginia and because we recognize this bill is the right thing to do. The bill now heads to the full House Education Committee and if the legislation passes the House, the General Assembly will send it to Governor Terry McAuliffe for his signature. McAuliffe said Thursday that if the bill makes it to his desk, he will sign it. He made a campaign pledge to support the move in a bid to gain votes from ethnic Koreans living in the state. But McAuliffe may face an uphill battle as the Japanese embassy in Washington is ramping up pressure on him. The embassy says by signing the bill, Japan might choose to stop investing so much in Virginia. 
Japan has invested almost $1 billion in the state over the past five years. Meanwhile, the world's largest comic strip and cartoon festival, which opened in France on Thursday, exhibited Korean cartoons depicting the Japanese military's wartime use of sex slaves, or as they are sometimes known as, comfort women. Kim young Arirang News. The North Korean ambassador to Britain says his country has no intention of releasing imprisoned Korean-American Kenneth Bay until he finishes his sentence of 15 years hard labor. Speaking to Britain's Sky News on Thursday, Hyun Hak Bong said Bay was being treated fairly but suggested he would not be pardoned before his sentence was complete. The ambassador also explained the process behind the execution of the North Korean leader's once powerful uncle Jang Sung Tech, mentioning that Jang had spent over six million U.S. dollars in 2009 alone. The envoy said Jang was guilty of tremendous crimes against the government, the people, and the country. The ambassador also said Jang had confessed to his crimes and was executed by a firing squad. Panama has released 32 of the 35 crew members from a North Korean ship detained in July last year for carrying hidden arms from Cuba. The Chong Chon Gang was found to be carrying Cuban fighter jets and missiles. The owners agreed to pay an over 650,000 US dollar fine this month to release the ship. The leading prosecutor in the case says the captain and two other crew members will remain in the Central American country to face arms trafficking charges. They could face up to 15 years in prison if found guilty. The 32 released crew members have been turned over to immigration officials who are still figuring out whether to repatriate or deport them. The ship, which was seized in the Panama Canal on July 15th last year, had been carrying Cuban military hardware, including two MiG-21 fighter jets, nine missiles, and two anti-aircraft systems. They were hidden beneath thousands of tons of sugar. Now, as millions of Koreans enjoy the extended Lunar New Year break, the bird flu crisis gripping the nation is showing no signs of letting up. Two more cases were confirmed on Thursday as, gov as the government coordinates a round-the-clock mission to sterilize not only farms, but interchanges on highways that are chocked full of people heading to or from their hometowns. Shin Se-min reports. Most Koreans are spending time with their loved ones on this Lunar New Year's Day, but thousands of government employees and quarantine officials, as well as the military and police, are working tirelessly to try and contain the spread of the bird flu. Government officials are on duty at sterilization facilities, at interchanges on highways, and at bus and train stations across the nation. Two more chicken farms reported confirmed cases of the bird flu on Thursday, a disturbing sign that quarantine efforts may only be having a limited impact. Tests came back positive from a chicken breeding farm in Hwasong in the central province of Gyeonggi-do and another in Biryang in Gyeongsangnam-do province in the southeast of the country. The confirmations prompted authorities in Gyeonggi-do province to call all chickens within three-kilometer radiuses of the affected farms. In Gyeongsangnam-do province, approximately 90,000 chickens will be destroyed in a preventive effort to stop the virus spreading. The contamination in Miryang is especially disturbing as it shows the virus is gradually spreading eastward across Korea. This is also the first infection confirmed at poultry farms in Gyeonggi-do, a region that is home to the largest number of chicken farms in the country with over 55 million chickens. As a new step to stem the spread of the virus, the government has banned all sales of live chickens and ducks at traditional markets until early next month. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. The number of online financial scams in Korea topped 30,000 cases last year as scamming methods became increasingly diversified and sophisticated. Police say they recorded more than 32,000 cases of scams like smishing, voice phishing, instant messenger phishing and memory hacking in the January to October period of last year. 
Officials say smishing caused the most damage to financial consumers, incurring some five million U.S. dollars in losses. Smishing uses small, uh, short message services rather, while phishing uses text messages to lure people to false websites and dupe them into revealing their bank account or credit card information. On a lighter note, it seems there really is no stopping Hallyu or the so-called Korean wave of the country's pop music, TV dramas and movies from sweeping the world. The Bank of Korea says the country posted yet another personal, cultural and entertainment service surplus of 160 million US dollars last year. That is more than two and a half times higher than the surplus posted in 2012. The figure tracks exports and imports of things like K-pop, Korean movies, Korean TV programs, games, audio sources, concerts and distribution rights. And finally, taking a brief look at the weather here in Korea on this Lunar New Year's Day. The entire nation is under clear skies this evening and it is relatively mild for a mid-winter day. The overnight low will only dip down to one degree Celsius in Seoul. And looking forward to the weekend, we will continue to enjoy quite mild conditions, but light rain is forecast for the capital and its surrounding areas all day on Saturday. We can expect similar conditions on Sunday, but it will feel a couple of degrees milder. Let's take a look at the weather conditions wherever you are around the world. And that's all for now. On behalf of everyone here at Arirang TV and particularly the news team, we wish you all a very happy Lunar New Year and hope you enjoy the rest of the day and the weekend. We'll be back for our next newscast at 10pm Korea time.